our serious radio uh, pet host, Greg Cleva. And Greg, I'm sure our studio audience has lots of questions. This studio audience should, for yes, sure. Yes, uh, lots of questions. Please raise your hand if you have one. Oh, right there. Yes, hi. Hi, I'm Susan O'Donnell from White House Station, New Jersey, and this is Brooke, a tree-walking coon hound. And my question is, why do some dogs cower and shake in a certain situation and other dogs are just as happy as they could be? Okay, especially, that's a great question, uh, especially with, with you all with rescue dogs. Depending on what age we rescue the dog, we don't really know what their background consisted of, what kind of experience have they had previously in their lives before you got them. If they missed socialization at critical periods, they may be a little bit uh, fearful in certain situations. So um, that the cowering that you see, the shaking that you see is, a, is adrenaline uh, that causes the dog to shake, unused energy. We see this a lot with dogs with training as well. If you'd make a dog stay and the dog's going, I really want to go get that cat. Um, it's just, it's unused energy. It's the dog going, I, I want to move, but I, I can't. I'm not letting myself do it. So um, the best thing you can do in that situation, if it's a fear situation, is create positive associations by using food. <laughs> Uh, or anything else that the dog is motivated by. If the dog has a favorite toy or something along those lines, just get the dog to go, you know, if it's, I don't like when you rumble the garbage can down the driveway, uh, rumble the garbage can just a little bit and give, give food or play with the favorite toy so the dog goes, okay, I kind of like when that happens. Good question. Hi. Hi, my name is Abby. I'm from Quincy, Massachusetts, and this is my dog, Poco. She was rescued from Puerto Rico through the Save a Sato program. And my question is, when we are inside, she will always come when she's called. But when we go outside, she completely ignores me. <laughs> I'll bet you're the only come. one out there that has that issue with her <laughs> <laughs> That's a common one, absolutely. Um, outside, obviously, there's a lot more distraction. There's more to see, more to smell, more to hear. Uh, in order to educate your dog, whether it's inside or out, you've got to create focus first. You've got to get that awareness. So if you need to you know, call your dog's name first, if that doesn't work, give a little growl. This may sound kind of silly, but ah. A little clap of the hands to get your dog to look. Now, what's also important with recall or coming when called is body language and tones. You're going to look much more inviting to your dog if you crouch down nice and low. Make it a big party where you are. Even if you're a little bit frustrated or aggravated with your dog, <laughs> you don't want to use that, get over here. You want to, come on, good puppy, come on. You want the dog to go, hey, mom's having a party. I want to go check that out. And give them lots of praise when they get there. Yeah. Okay. okay. And I, I want to stress that positive reinforcement is really so much better with your animals than anything harsh or mean or absolutely. Yeah, I, I think it's so so important that uh, that and never 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 hit a dog in the face. Never. You you can be firm with your dog without being physical. Firm but fair and never. You know, you never want to do anything that's going to break down that relationship. Right. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Ireland from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I have two dogs, Bailey and Hercules, who couldn't be here with us today. Um, my husband and I are thinking of having a baby. And so what can we start doing now to kind of prepare when it eventually happens to prepare the dogs for that event? That's a great question. We get this all the time. And good luck with, uh, with your, your progress in attempting <laughs> to have a baby. <laughs> have fun with that. Um, <laughs> Uh, what you want to do is get the dog um, used to the sights and sounds and smells that are going to come along with the arrival of a baby. Mm -hmm. Again, sounds kind of silly, but if you need to, to buy a baby doll that does a little crying, uh, carry it around with you and educate the dog. Let the dog know that jumping up is not an acceptable behavior while you're carrying the baby doll around. Right. Use the same lotions and powders and everything else that you're going to be using on the baby on the doll as well. And again, teach those positive behaviors now before the baby actually gets here. Um, when the baby does come, uh, you can bring a skull cap home from the hospital before the baby comes home and get the dog used to the scent of your actual baby mm -hmm. to get the dogs accustomed that way as well. Thank you. Okay, hi. Hi, I'm Kurt from Chatham, New Jersey, and this is Marcus, a Jack Russell rescue dog. And my question is, he chews toys constantly and shreds everything to get to the squeaker. How do we stop that? <laughs> Great question. Uh, uh, no squeaker toys. No squeaker yeah. toys. That's the common sense answer. Yes. My dogs have, I call them carcasses, carcasses of squeaker toys all over the house. It's a, it's a that, that destructive chewing is an anxiety-based behavior. It's a, it's a release for anxiety. Uh, not to mention that Jack Russell is basically bred to grab critters and shake them up. Um, you want to provide the dog with mental stimulation so that, he, so that you reduce that anxiety or boredom that he's got. Well, that game is a great game. Exactly. Yeah, the Talk because, to Me Treat Ball, right. uh, the, the Nina Otteson toys, these are all great ways to provide your dog with mental stimulation, reduce boredom, keep him calm and relaxed. 
you know, I, I have, um, Francesca will kill every toy <laughs> immediately. And so I don't give him, you know, he has other choice. That's the common sense answer. Yes. And there are safety issues around that as well. Heaven forbid your dog should ingest a piece of plastic from the squeak or anything along those lines. Yep. Well, thank you for your great questions. You can catch Greg's radio show, It's a Dog's Life, on Thursday evenings at 8 p.m. on Martha Stewart Living Radio, ah. Sirius 112 and XM 157. And you can call him and ask him other questions that you may have been a little bit too embarrassed to ask in person on my show. <laughs> but he has the great answers all the time. Thanks, Greg, so Thanks much. Thanks again, Martha. We'll be right back.